What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, back for another episode of the third person tutorial. This time we're going to be dealing with uh, zooming in in third person. And we're going to make it so the character walks slower, such as he's got fine aim. And you can see the animation actually plays slower as well. Uh, the Obviously the camera zooms in, and also the camera is going to raise its height. That way if you have a, like a weapon, that you want to be aiming and you want to be looking over their shoulder you don't want this guy in the center of your screen um, now it is a snap it's not going to be over time like a nice quick zoom in and we can also make that happen but this is enough I think for one episode on its own just a short little zoom in episode and how you can change these things and then we can work on making it look better so first of all uh, if you haven't seen the first person shooter tutorial video that has uh, zooming in and aiming down sights. If you want to go to a first person mode from the third person mode, such as uh, you have a sniper, you zoom in, and then it goes to like a first person view of the scope, then you can go ahead and click on this video on the icon in the top right. But if you just want to do the third person over the shoulder aim, such as Gears of War or something along those lines, then this is all you're going to need to do. So first of all, let's go ahead and go to our Gears of War template character. Now if you're new to this series, don't worry, you don't need to know anything that we've done up to this point to make this work. So I call it Gears of War template, um, really this is just the third person template tutorial. Okay. So uh, the only thing I will say, and I'm going to start saying this at the start of all my videos, if you are new to this series, uh, the way we are making this project is new project, C++, and third person. And we're using this template for this series. So if you have this, you can make everything that you have that you see in this video today happen, okay? So make sure you're using the third person template or at least understand uh, that there will be some some reliances on that that you'll have to put in yourself. Okay? So anyway, let's start off with what we need variable and function wise. So we're going to need a zoom in and stop zoom or zoom out function. Uh, whatever you want. So the reason we need a zoom in and a zoom out or zoom in, stop zoom like I called it is because when you press the button we have to zoom in but if it never looks for the release of that button you will stay zoomed in forever. So you want to have two functions basically one to zoom the camera in and one to revert the camera back to original. We're also going to need a variable called is zoomed in it's a boolean and I made it blueprint read write. You don't actually need it to be in this case, uh, but honestly when you're working on single player projects such as this, you never know when you're going to need it. I like to clean my code up later. A lot of people will probably disagree with that and think it's ugly or gross or something. Um, and also I just copied this, so let me weapon. So you don't have to make it blueprint, uh, you don't have to add the U property if you don't want, but we do need a boolean is zoomed in, or just a boolean whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's all we actually need to set up, believe it or not. It's pretty simple, right? But we do need to do some stuff in the code itself, of course. So in the constructor, which is the very first function in the file, uh, not always, by the way, but if you're not familiar with this series, uh, the constructor is basically when this object gets initialized, this is what its variables get set to. So we want to make sure we set is zoomed in to false by default. Otherwise, if we set it to true by default, then you will start in the zoomed in phase, which you probably don't want to do because you want to wait for their, the player input. All right, this next part we're going to need to go to the engine for, and people who are familiar with this series are probably going to be familiar with what I'm going to do, but we need to add the player input component uh, controls for this. So if you go to your engine, go to edit and project settings, and then go to input. I have a action mapping. You can hit the plus to add a new one. I call this one zoom, and I put it to the right mouse button. So all you do is you click on the little drop down, select what you want, like I wanted right mouse button, and then click it, there you go. Right mouse button. So what this means is uh, when I, when this, player input component value is found, then it will call a function, okay? So right mouse button is what we've assigned. Make sure you copy this name or remember what you called it. Case matters, so zoom. Go into your setup player input component function. 
This will be in your default character if you're using the third person template or whatever character you have just as long as you have access to this function. You can go ahead and place in, you can copy these other ones up above if you want and just paste it. It's pretty much the same stuff. Uh, but basically the long and short of it is you want to put the name in that you had that we just called it, which we called it Zoom. And we assign it to the right mouse button. You want a pressed and a released because when we press it, we want to call the zoom in function. When we release it, we want to call it the stop zoom function. And then make sure uh, this is the right character class. If you did copy it from above, you might have copied the jump, which is actually from Unreal's A character class. But we want to use our overridden character, which in this case for me is the Gears of War template character. Okay. So that assigns, when I press the right mouse button, it's going to call this function. When I release it, it's going to call this function. So, of course, the last thing we need to do is actually make those functions do something. So, uh, to zoom in and zoom out, it's not too complicated. You just have to find out some of the variables or some of the objects that are attached to the actor. And I'm going to give you kind of a general tip because you might want to do things that I don't mention in this video. You can go to the third person character right here in the world outliner of Unreal. Open this box a little bit and you can see the components he has attached to him. He's got a camera boom. So the camera boom is where he's actually positioned, right? So if I change the target arm length, then you see he gets closer to the camera. So by default, he's closer to the camera. Okay, so you can change them right in here. Let me, uh, whoops. Uh, let's see. So you can change it right in there. The issue is, of course, you want to change it at a certain time, like when you press the right mouse button, or maybe you don't want to do it on one certain character because you want everyone in that that's using that code class to do it, especially in a multiplayer game or in games where characters are dynamically spawned. It's not going to work where you can just assign it right on the spot like that. But this little world outliner thing and looking at the components on this template character are a really good way to determine what variables you need to access, and it's a lot of the time how I end up finding them. Okay, so the camera boom, I knew the target arm length was one of the ones I needed because that zoomed it in. And then also there's the target offset, which determines like where the camera is actually placed in relation to him. Um, and speaking of, actually, I want to go ahead and edit this when we're done. So let's go ahead and go over the functions, and then I'll edit the values to make it look a little bit nicer even. So the zoom in function and the zoom out function are pretty much the exact same function, but with different values. For the zoom in function, we need to, okay, so when you see an if statement with an auto, and I've mentioned this in the first person tutorial, but this is really important knowledge. If you see auto in Unreal or in C++ in general, uh, there are times you can use auto. There's, it's It gets kind of confusing if you're not familiar with C++, C++ or Unreal, but basically, uh, if you see the auto keyword when programming, this usually means that you're going to do an operation, like in this case, we're going to call this function. This function returns a use spring arm component pointer, as you can see by the function definition there, or the, uh, the function header there. And what happens is this is a variable we're creating, essentially. So we're not giving it a certain type. Like you could do use spring arm component instead of auto here, and it would work. The reason you can do auto is because it'll just pick up on the, the proper type returned, and sometimes that's actually more helpful than a, an explicit uh, explicit variable type, simply because you can do more manipulation with it, and you don't have to worry about the specific types if you end up changing it, or if you look for this specific component in the camera. Maybe I just want you know, just grab it. I don't care. I don't need it again, right? So auto is essentially just doing that and just automatically grabbing this variable. So we're essentially saying if get camera boom is not null pointer. All right. So essentially we're getting the camera boom. I call it third person camera and I'm just putting a log. You don't have to do this, but this is, we are now zooming in. This is just a little safety check. In case it's not working, you can see if this log is printing. If it's not printing, you're not getting into this function. Then, all we do is change the target arm length 
So third person camera, which we made right here, target arm length. Third person camera, target offset. So the target arm length determines the zoom, the target offset determines where it's positioned, which by the way, this is what I wanted to change. So it's the Y axis. So let's see here. For the Y axis, I don't know what a good value would be, but maybe 20. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to kind of position it over his shoulder so he's not right in the center of the screen. And then this last part is to slow the character down while they're in that zoom mode because, you know, usually in games or and in real life, when you're looking down the sights of a weapon or when you're focusing on something, you don't run full speed with that focus or while you got your your iron sights on, right? Usually you slow down a bit so that you can actually aim. So all you do is get the character movement. This is the same thing, just getting the character movement component. And then I just change the max walk speed in the state to 300, which will slow him down because it's originally at 600. And then make is zoomed in true. Um, is zoomed in to true, it's not necessary that you have any logic with this right now. Um, basically what this will be used for is you can use it for an animations down the line. You can use it to determine, oh, okay, if he's zoomed in, we want to play this animation, you know, while they're walking because they should raise their gun to their, to about eye level. Or if he's zoomed in, we want to do this logic, right? So we're not going to do anything with it now, but I would highly recommend having this Boolean, especially when it comes to assets like animations or even meshes could change depending on sometimes uh, you don't want to render the full gun the whole time. So they actually will switch it out on the fly. I've seen that happen. So I recommend having a Boolean here. We don't have to do anything with it today, but there you go. You'll be happy to know that stop zoom or zoom out is basically the exact same function. I change the text in the log and then I set everything back to default. So the default target arm length is 300. The default target offset is 000, and the max walk speed is 600. And then I put is zoomed into false. So there you go. And then just make sure you build. I'm gonna, I have to build because I changed the target offset here. And then we will compile in Unreal, and we'll see the final result again, but hopefully it'll look a little bit to the right of the character. All right, guys, so I went ahead and made it 80. I had to go and fix it right here on the uh, recording, <laughs> during the recording, because it was kind of bothering me that it was directly in the center of his back as opposed to over his shoulder. So now if you look at this, it should look like this when you zoom in. So that looks pretty good, and I think that's uh, I think that's pretty successful of an episode for zooming in third person. Now I will say, um, since your character does not rotate with the mouse, you rotate the camera itself and the camera do and the um, character does not rotate with the camera, but doing this method will make it weird when you rotate the mouse. And I'm aware of this. For uh, the purposes of this tutorial, I'm actually going to be um, switching this and making it so when we rotate the mouse in this mode, it rotates the character and thus he will stay like this the entire time, this view of him, and it'll just rotate around like that. So I know that that's an issue right now with the way that the third person template sets it up, but we will fix it in probably the next episode. So if you guys have any particular issues with it or want to get it fixed earlier, uh, I would seriously recommend joining the discord. We have about 60 members right now, and I'd be happy to send photos and videos over there to help you out in advance. But otherwise, guys, uh, that'll be that'll be one of the next episodes we do, if not the very next episode where we fix the actual, the, the rotating the character with the camera. That way it's not all janky. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for watching this whole video. Uh, like I said, if you're interested in joining the Discord, you can talk to us about, we have a ton of members there who are happy to help. We can talk to you about you know specific issues you're having, or you can recommend videos that I do next and vote on them, things like that. And in general, uh, you can just hang out and meet me as someone who's not just a YouTube voice, but also a person <laughs> if you're interested in that. So go ahead and do that if you're interested. The link is in the description. I can't link it to the R card because YouTube is weird. But that's it for that, guys. And then lastly, I just wanted to thank everyone who has come from YouTube and followed me and subscribed on Twitch. You guys are awesome. 
and I just have to keep saying it because every single time we get new people who are like, hey, I'm from, I'm from YouTube, and, you know, they come and they support us, so thank you guys. It really means a lot. Specifically, in this case, I want to give a shout out to Dragon Grindle and my friend Robert. Uh, you guys are great and always, always so supportive of us. So thank you so much for everything. And uh, I'll continue to do these shout outs every week so that everyone can, can get one because you guys all deserve it. And we really appreciate having you. So thanks so much, guys. I do want to give uh, one final announcement. Uh, this is about the schedule of the programming video. So this one's pretty important. Uh, if you are someone who's coming from primarily the fighting game, or you prefer, or you like learning about the fighting game, I'm going to be doing the fighting game every other episode from here on out until we complete it, which could be a very long time from now. But uh, you guys have shown so much love and support for the fighting game, and I think it's worth it to show it off, to uh, thank you guys for everything you've done. I think it's important to listen to your requests. So there's been so many requests to do this for the fighting game or do that for the fighting game. And I've only been doing one fighting game episode a month. I do one episode about the series a month. But I was doing the tracking and it would take about six months to finish all the requests that I have right now for the fighting game. So six episodes, right? But if I do it um, every other week, so two episodes a month, then I can get it out in obviously half the time, but even a little under, or, or even around two months, the way it actually lines up in the calendar with where we're positioned right now. So yeah, if you guys are big fans of the fighting game, uh, you can be hopefully very excited about that. So give me all your video requests. I'll be doing that, but don't worry. All the videos will be uh, maintaining their current rotation period other than the fighting game will be added in between each and every one of them all right guys so that's seriously all i have now so thanks for listening to my little rambling but i appreciate you uh if you want to help me out here on youtube the best thing you can do is subscribe uh, it means more to me than anything and it just genuinely supports me more than anything so being completely transparent so if you're interested uh, do that and then it'll let you know when I post a new video of the fighting game or other so anyway guys Thank you so much. I'm Sean the bro. Have a good one